One of the most famous verses in the Bible is John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The question I want to pose today is, does the world know that, especially the most remote parts of the world? To investigate that question, welcome to Papua New Guinea. Now that has to be the smallest coconut I have ever seen. <laughs> so how did we get here? Why did we get here? And how did the gospel get to such a remote location? For us, it was a four day journey to get here. We took three planes to get into Papua New Guinea, which brought us to Port Moresby. And then we had to take a smaller plane that stopped off at several islands before it landed in Balimo. And I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't feeling good at all. I was motion sick, it was raining, we had all of our luggage, and it wasn't like landing in an airport. We landed on a dirt runway with a little roof to kind of come out from under the rain to then be greeted by a truck that's coated in mud to load everything up into. We went down this dirt road that had more potholes than I've ever seen. Some potholes seemed like they were the size of vehicles themselves. And that brought us to a boat. Meanwhile, it's still raining, so we put all of our luggage in a tarp in the boat to take a 30 minute boat ride to get to Kewa Village where we are today. So when I tell you that we're in a remote part of the world, I'm not kidding at all. So why did we come here? Well, my wife actually spent six years of her life here. Her parents have been full-time missionaries here for the last 17 years, and this is their final year. My wife and I have talked for quite some time about coming out here, but it just hasn't worked out until now that God has lined everything up so that we were able to come, and not just to come to visit, but actually to come to help be a part of spreading the gospel here. I don't know what to do about this wind, but let's give it a shot. Answering that last question, how is it that the gospel reaches such a remote location like here in Kewa Village? Well, God has directly called missionaries like the Erickson family to leave the States, leave other areas of the world, and to come out to these remote locations. And we're seeing the effects of that. Right behind me is one of the many churches that we see in these areas. And it's amazing to see the numbers that show up and the people that are not only a part of the church, but sharing as well. As I came here, it wasn't simply to visit, but I also created a series of interviews, uh, video interviews to share the story of this location. And I, I got to meet with Bonnie and Uladu and see how he went from being sentenced to 10 years in prison to now planting a church and being used powerfully by God. We talked to Siki, who has become a leader and is especially trying to help the youth and the area and this church here specifically grow. And of course, we talked to the missionaries and my wife and her sister and others of how God has not only been reaching people here, but God uses the missionaries to not only reach other people, but it also impacts their lives personally. And so while I've been here, it's been incredible to see how the gospel is going to the ends of the earth. And this is what Matthew 24 says, that the gospel will be preached in all the ends of the earth as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. And so, yes, God loves the world and he cares and he didn't just set up a message and kind of say good luck. But even without technology and Internet and things like that, God is working through his church to take this message to the world. That's how much he loves the world. That's how much he loves each and every one of us. And to see it here firsthand has really been impactful for me. So with living here and seeing God bring the gospel to such a remote part of the world, how has that affected your view of how God cares about your life? Well, it's shown me that uh, God has a purpose for my life and he made it clear that we, he knows that we exist. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really eye-opening and definitely um, I felt his care throughout the experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's been great to see what's happening. And as you can see, like God really does love the world and he's continuing to reach out. Hey, Ember, can you look at the camera? Can you say subscribe? <laughs> subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you in the next video.